Hello, beautiful beings of light. I've been trying to make this video for several days now outside of my home here in living right in the center of West Asheville, North Carolina, one of the spiritual epicenters of literal, literally of the earth. And it's been amazing because outside, as soon as I try to do it, weed eaters, you know, street cleaners, rain, everything. And people think, oh my God, there's so many forces that don't want it out there. I'm like, well, that's not really the thing. It's just, I'm in the real world, uh, whatever real means in that sense. And I think that it's fine that people are up, and I mean it truly, navig you know, meditating on their navels for the peace of humanity. That's huge. In monasteries and hermitages, up in the mountains, etc., it really is huge. But I'd really love to see them, as I always say, down with their birth family, around their brothers, sisters, uncles, cousins, who used to give them nuggies and pinch them really hard and all that kind of stuff. I want to see them with their genetic family and bloodline and see how enlightened they really are. Because those of us that are here, we're the ones that are doing very deep vital work. But all levels of that work is vital, so never think that you being stuck in the world is somehow not important, that you're not able to do the real work, because guess what? If you're able to do it in the real world, it's like do it, it's the difference between swimming in a pool and swimming in jello. And right now we are trying to move in jello. And it's becoming hard, almost like paste. So imagine what you can learn finding fluidity within that. So here is me clarifying. People asked me a bit about visitations and dark malevolence and i had to make that previous video about demons etc what a demon really is people including people that supposedly work with them don't even know what they are bless their hearts i love them all dearly but what i'm taking you back to here is something that i have mentioned people that are close to me are in my mentoring program in the mentoring program program i work one-on-one -on -one with people with levels of force like this in places that most people wouldn't even be able to enter the room with this kind of energy in the room. I've had many visitations in my life going back to being a child in southern New Jersey, growing up in Mount Royal, Clarksboro, East Greenwich Township, right across the river, Delaware River from Philadelphia, and then again later after when I was 10 moving to uh, Pittsgrove Township near Elmer, New Jersey on the edge of the Pine Barrens. I've had a lot of experience and there's a lot in my book, Echoes of an Ancient Dream. It's available on Amazon. It's on my website. You can get a signed copy on my website with the jump drive. But um, it's just a USB drive of everything that I have rolled into one, all of my official programs. But I've had many visitations. I um, have had visitations from what definitely obviously and still do what people would call extraterrestrials some people would say alien but aliens kind of a problematic word in that sense extraterrestrial meaning not of this earth and i would say not only are they extraterrestrial they're also transdimensional and one of the things that i had been mistaking younger when i was younger was that these forces of what one could call evil or malevolence were somehow out to get me and I had to understand later in life, although there's some things I understood as a kid, even as a seven, eight year old, when I really started digging into the Jesus stuff, I had lots of visitations at that time. We're talking in the year of 1979. I remember falling asleep with my one earpiece, the AM radio I got from my great grandfather, who I just adored. And he gave me the radio. He used to listen to his Phillies, you know, Philadelphia Phillies and Flyers games on 76ers. And I would fall asleep listening to the AM radio stations from Philadelphia and stuff. But I would often wake up in the night with the walls of my house, of the bedroom, basically what I call glassine. And it wasn't like they completely weren't there. It was almost like Wonder Woman's jet. Like you knew there were, the form was there for them, but yet, they were just completely see-through. And what started happening for me, I didn't talk with many people because I didn't know even how to explain it. What would often happen is the, the walls would go glassine. I, I, and I s distinctly remember several, what one could call cryptids, who were visiting me. Um, hard to explain, like the back legs, almost like a like a velociraptor type leg with different sort of reptilian bodies 
um, yeah, <sighs> breathing into this. I have had many visits from what one could call, what one would call Lucifer, which if you dig deep enough into the teachings, Satan's not an actual person. Satan, Satana in Aramaic, literally just means a being divided against itself, a house divided against itself, a kingdom divided against itself, a city divided against itself. It means uh, an absolute and or, I don't like using the word oneness, but just to say a oneness or really an absolute that has no other. And when that absolute manifests, there is this illusion of two, of three, of, you know, two, four, 16, etc., cetera, 64. We have these ideas of multiplicity that somehow, you know, all these different manifestations, when the truth of the matter is there's really only one. We have the idea that there's nine billion people walking the earth, but the truth of the matter is how many lights are there really? There's one. So when you start understanding that, these beings were showing up and I started realizing that, you know, first of all, here's where I talk about the etheric ants. It's kind of an electromagnetic bed that when, or an electromagnetic blanket that kind of gets tossed over you. And you're, it, everyone's had this, whether you remember this or not, you've had these experiences in your life. You just may ha either have blocked them out or not remember. It's an electromagnetic blanket. I call it etheric ants because there's these dancing, almost like little electrons moving across uh, the bed. And you're pulled into the gravity of, you're literally being pulled into the gravitational force of the earth. You can't speak, you can't breathe, you can't move, nothing. And it was some, I don't know how it happened. I don't know where the idea came. I'm pretty sure it happened in one of my what I call my, my nature experiences out in the county woods across the street behind the farm across the street from where I grew up uh, until I was 10 years old. And one of those beings that I would spend time with, these positive, benevolent, amazing, serene beings that I would spend time with to get away from the intensity of, I mean, I didn't have an awful home life, but I had things that most people would have committed suicide over. Um, at some point, someone recommended, hey, you know, you don't actually have to breathe. All you have to do is imagine that you're breathing, which is amazing to me because now I teach silent toning. You know, you can tone, oh, and that's really powerful. But you can tone without making the sound. And you still feel that vibration. You still feel its essence. I came to that conclusion from a combination of remembering this as a child, that even if I could imagine breathing, I'll start breathing. But people that were on a ventilator, how do I follow, how does my dad follow his breath if he's, you know, on some kind of breathing machine? You know, how does he follow his breath? How does he follow, how does he do the toning and all that? I'm like, they only have to do the toning in their imagination. You don't actually have to make the sound because the power is not in the sound. The power is in awareness. It's in coming back to the absolute. Well, I started realizing that these occasionally dark beings were showing up, whether they be alien, extraterrestrial. I'll make more videos about a lot of these different experiences. But I realized that they were feeding on my sort of spirit cooties or spirit barnacles. What the heck are you talking about? Meaning they were feeding on my fear, my false evidence appearing real. And the more afraid I was, the bigger my salad buffet became. So the more they'd show up. And Lucifer being one of those creatures, you know, the morning star, and I'll make more videos about Lucifer, Lucifer, represented by Venus. Venus is always above the horizon, never fully touches the earth. Satan, Satana, wasn't an actual being, but fell from heaven completely to earth, meaning the complete fall into the physical world, into what's called the underworld. And what Satan is, is this changing cast of characters within ourselves when we are divided against ourselves. It becomes the milkman, it becomes the, the evil stepfather, it becomes all these different people, the evil politician, whatever it may be. And it's a changing cast of characters. But remember, there's no devils in the world or running around in the world, just those in our hearts, in you know, paraphrasing Gandhi. And it's quite true. Lucifer, on the other hand, 
is an actual entity, is an actual being that's so incredibly misunderstood, much like Baphomet. Baphi is that statue that the Church of Satan so brilliantly puts up in all these different places just to piss Christians off. And the reason it's amazing is because Christians see the statue and say, oh, look, there's a, a statue of Satan because the Church of Satan worships Satan. And of course, people, 99.9% .9 of the of people that would call themselves you know, a Christian on that level don't even know what Satan means. Some people will just say adversary. I'm like, that's not even beginning to scratch the surface of what it means. But essentially, the Church of Satan isn't there as worshiping Satan, but just in response to the BS of established religion. And it's amazing because they're using the ignorance. The hardest thing about what I do is navigating people's ignorance, especially within the Christian realm or religious realms. The supposed experts, the reason they're called experts is because they're able to parrot back that which they were conditioned with. And the better you can spit it back out, the conditioning, the indoctrination, the more you're called an expert. The truth of the matter is, bless their hearts, I love them all dearly. You know what happens after I say that? They don't have the slightest clue what they're talking about, so many of them. They can't get past the theology. Even people that teach Aramaic are stuck in the theology or the customs or the culture. And that's a piece of it, but it's a tiny piece of what Yeshua was trying to communicate, which doesn't fit into any of those boxes or frames. That being said, Lucifer, when I started realizing those visitations weren't to harm me or hurt me, but I was actually attracting those entities in by my own fear. And when I realized that if I could just imagine taking a breath, all of a sudden my physical body, my energy body was breathing and my salad buffet of fear started going <laughs> once I realized that key, I realized that there's, there's a benefit here in having these visitations because they're not here to hurt me or harm me. They're actually here feeding on what's dead, what's not real within me. Are you breathing right now? And then I started looking at Lucifer in a different way, not like, you know, my poker buddy necessarily, but realizing, wow, feet never touch the earth, represented by the morning star of Venus, stuck in, I don't want to say purgatory, that's more of a Catholic word, but stuck in that limbo space between heaven and earth. And Luciferian ideas is something I'll talk about in future videos, but if you know people that are sort of all angel realm talk and there's no roots, what Yeshua was spoke of as castles in the air now build foundations beneath them. People that you can't, you can't want to talk about something that's grounded right here in the physical world, they can't do it because they're stuck in the angel realms. Within Gnosticism and different ancient studies, the mystery schools, they called that Luciferianism. Luciferianism is where we get stuck. It, it's cognitive in the head and it feels so safe and it feels angelic, but the truth of the matter is the angels aren't up and out. The angels are here because that word angel, angelos, from the Greek, malakha in Aramaic, means literally messenger. Angelos in the Koine Greek is literally the word, the same word as angle. And what is that? Whoa, wait a second. So we are literally the light of eternity projected into the prism of the manifest universe and refracted into all these directions. That's us. We we are the angels. The miracle is not outside. The miracle is life itself. When you start understanding this, you start realizing that you can actually be in the presence of absolute, and I've had several experiences we'll get to, rotten, I don't know how to explain it, death, neck, necro, like rotting flesh, death, like cosmic sewage, you can be in the presence of these kinds of powers. And when you realize that they only can exist by feeding on what's dead within us, all of a sudden the game flips and changes. And what's funny is you think, oh, well, then once I get that figured out, all these heavy ones are gonna start coming at me. And I'm like, well, that happens too. And trust me, you wanna start talking about what's really being said in a lot of the Jesus teachings. You wanna find out how to get galactic beings on your tail. Talk about that because there's a whole matrix of energy against me revealing these insights in a non-theological, 
hypercultural manner, meaning not locked in culture or time period. Um, yes, it's important to understand the time period, but it's more important not to understand what Jesus' listeners would have understood, but the highest, widest magnitude of what he was seeking to communicate. And I had to have these visitations. We'll get into the extraterrestrial, the alien, transdimensional in future videos. I had to have these visitations to be able to allow the resonance of the intensity of these kinds of forces of energy without buckling down in the experience. Because it's never going to be what I know that's going to be most important. Mm -mm. It's actually going to be how much energy can I process right now in the presence of this moment. It'll never be the information that's most important ever. It's never been what I'm saying that's most important. People that work with me one-on-one -on -one in the mentoring understand this. Well, not all of them. Most of them should. But it's never been the words. It's being able to allow yourself to let go of what you think you know, to connect in with the source of all knowing itself. And even at the source of knowing, there's no knowing because in order to know, there needs to be a knower plus a known, which requires a duality, which is not what's real. What's real is what's absolute. It's like the difference between channeling an entity versus coming from the place that they're coming from, that entity, that positive uh, benevolent entity, and realizing there's no reason to channel them because their source is your source. Why would you hand that power away? The same with these supposedly dark, evil beings. What does evil mean in Aramaic? The word's bisha. It's like a piece of fruit that is rotten, it's overripe, or it's stone green banana meaning it's not fertile and present and edible right now in this moment. Evil soil, rotten soil, it's not fertile. When you understand that your fertility is awakened through the rise and fall of your own breath and being able to allow the resonance of these essential energies as they move through your system that would break anybody else down, when you realize it's about that, you realize that the force of darkness and or evil is only that because we aren't acknowledging it, we're not looking at it. We're stuck in the Luciferian, sugary, sunshine angel realms, or we're not doing what we came here to do, which is to be the grounding rods for humanity and to help others navigate the cosmic shift, because that's why we're here. I love you all so dearly. Stay tuned, subscribe to my channel, go on my website, DaleAllenHoffman.com, get on my email list, there's always stuff going out. We have an incredible retreat coming in July in Georgia. As of today, we've only got uh, just under, just over, yeah, we got, what, 10 spaces left, and we can only fit 30 people, and I don't know if I wanna go as far as 30. Um, so, uh, that being said, I love you all so dearly. Please share this with others, and remember, The power is never, ever, ever outside of you because there's only the absolute. I love you so dearly.